Hi, I'm Sarah, and when I heard that monarchs travel thousands of miles each year, I got an idea. I decided to follow the monarchs on their round trip, multi-generational, multinational migration to learn from, teach about, and help save one of the world's most unique natural wonders. This is the story of that migration. It's a story of millions of monarchs, of the people in Mexico, the United States, and Canada working to protect the monarchs, and of my bicycle adventure to butter bike with these butterflies. Hey, everybody. I'm happy to report my trip is going great. Whoa, 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 whoa. Better than great. And so I'm celebrating the 2,000 mile mark of my trip. I've now biked in six states in Mexico and three states in the US. That's Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. One of my favorite parts of biking these last few weeks is seeing all the wildflowers along the road. These roadside gardens are some of the last remaining habitat for the migrating monarchs, and they're full of native flowers. Today we're gonna learn all about what the word native means. And why planting natives is so important, not just in the wild, but in our own backyards. So what does native mean? To answer this question, I went to a farm in Texas and spoke with a not so ordinary farmer. Well, my name is Bill Neiman, and I'm the owner of Native American Seed at Junction, Texas. That's right, Native American seed. He grows native plants and sells the seeds so that others can grow natives too. He explained what native means. Of what is a native anyway? It's like these are the plants that evolved here over thousands of years. So like the worst drought is no problem. The worst freeze is no problem and nobody has to water them or fertilize them they know exactly how to live right here with no extra care so being native means occurring naturally humans didn't move them so they've had thousands of years to adapt to the soil the rainfall the climate and other native plants and animals for example, these blanket flowers are native to many states, including Texas, and have evolved long roots called tap roots that help them find water and survive the hot, dry summers. Kind of like a long straw that lets them drink water found deep underground. That means if a person living in Texas plants blanket flowers in their garden, they won't have to water them in the summer. Now, this is green milkweed I found in Oklahoma and it's adapted to the cold winters by going dormant. If it lives in your garden, it'll die back in the winter but re-emerge in the spring, green and beautiful, and you won't have to keep planting new ones each year. So, why turn lawns into native gardens? Native plants need a lot less care. You don't need to water them, fertilize them, and they're more beneficial to plants and animals. Of course, Sprinklers are a great way to cool off. So if native means naturally occurring, what do we call the plants and animals that were moved by humans? There's the difference between native plants and alien plants. Scientists also use the words exotic, non-native, and introduced. So remember the blanket flower that is native to much of North America? Well, people have planted it all over the world, making it non-native in many parts. And in some areas, it's done so well that it's begun to hurt the natives and has become invasive. Many of the alien plants actually become invasive because they don't have any natural way to fit in. And so they spread and spread and then they take the place of where native plants could have been living. So there's problems when people don't understand the value of natives and what is a native anyway. That's right, Bill. But let's make sure we've got this straight. Is this one native? No. 
most of our lawns are full of introduced grasses from Europe. We have to water and fertilize them because they're non-native. Of course, in Europe, they are native. How about this common milkweed? Is it native? Well, yes, but only in the United States and Canada. Since people brought it to Europe, it is non-native and in a few places it's even invasive in Europe. It's okay to plant non-native plants in your yard. But if we can share our yards with natives, then monarchs and other species can survive, thrive, and call our home home too. So go learn more about natives in your area, and I'll keep enjoying them as I butter bike with the butterflies.